on our last video, we talked about the difference between intrusive and extrusive rock. And we, all, this video, we're going to be focusing on the differences of, of the actual texture and composition of the rocks, which are intrusive versus extrusive. And so rocks will form differently because they form from different magma. And mag, different magma makes different lava. Different lava makes different explosions, which makes different volcanoes, which makes different intrusion or extrusion, and it makes different rocks. Put it all together, there's a lot of different kinds of igneous rock, which are rocks formed from volcanic eruptions. Now, the biggest thing you need to know about this is that there's a difference between the rock being intrusive or extrusive. Rocks which are intrusive will tr typically cool down slower than rocks which are going to be extrusive because they're going to be exposed to, exposed to the magma chamber where the heat is at. Extrusive rocks, on the other hand, are going to touch the air or the water and going to cool down a lot faster. All right? That's going to change the way the rock crystallizes. Rocks that cool down slower will crystallize differently. You will have more fractional crystallization. You're going to have more variation between the sizes of the crystal in the rock. And they will tend to be more coarse grained or rough than other rocks which are more soft because they cool down faster. And so that means that how fast the crystallization happens will actually end up changing the texture of the rock. All right? Now, there's two main textures for rock. One is fine grain, and the other one's coarse grain. And then you have some stuff in between. The fine grain rock is also called aphanitic rock, all right? And the aphanitic rock will tend to form whenever the rock cools down fastest. So this will be common in extrusive rocks. And then the coarse grain rock, also called phaneritic rocks, are going to tend to form when there's a lot of slow cooling and a lot of crystallization in the rock which will form in different crystals of different sizes at different times and different layers and therefore form this coarse grain rock. When the rock is somewhere in between, you're going to have some fine grain and some coarse grain stuff all in the same rock. We call those porphyritic rocks, as you see in the right side there. And rocks which are formed because of explosive eruptions are more glassy in nature and sometimes even have vesicles of gas trapped inside of it which leave it holes as you see in a famous pumice rock right and we call those glassy rocks or vis vesicular rocks all right and so we're going to see these different textures that are going to show up because of these things and glassy rocks by the way can also can form also because of very 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 fine mafic eruptions that can happen as well so glassy rocks will happen either because of um, explosive eruptions and those were the ones that will create the grass crystals while the ones which will look kind of completely shiny and that's how it glassy will be will, will be coming from the mafic explosions so the best way to learn this is actually by example so let's talk about the different kinds of igneous rock all right so, so the first kind we're going to go over is the felsic rocks, and these are the rocks which will form normally in continental volcanoes, which where the magma has to go through uh, silicon and oxygen in order to uh, reach the surface, and then that will change any mafic rock into felsic, more viscous rock that tends to cool, cool, erupt at colder speeds and things like that. Now, these are the four types that you you will normally see. Okay, now. If this rock cools down slowly inside the earth in intrusive things like sills, batholiths, stocks, lacoliths, dikes, then it's going to be full of crystals, it's going to be very coarse, and it, it, it might be porphyritic sometimes, depending on how high it forms and how cool, slow it cools, but it, it's called granite. And granite is the stuff that mountains are made of, all right? A lot of the continental crust is actually granite. And it's slightly less dense than what the mafic rocks of the oceanic crust because it's not as rich in magnesium as the those rocks are. It's in fact rich in silicon and oxygen by definition since it's a felsic rock. Then you also have the rocks which are a little more extrusive. So it's, it's if you get the, the extrusive equivalent of granite. In other words, a rock just like granite. It's felsic, it, uh, and, but it formed at the surface because of, an ex uh, of, of, of the explosion that took place. And so the cooling will happen at a medium pace of extrusive rocks. And there will be very low crystallization because the rock pretty much crystallizes all at once. And that means there will be fine grain, 
or aphanitic. And sometimes it might be glassy and have vesicles inside, all right? Kind of like the pumice rock that has in the bottom. You also have obsidian. Now, obsidian is the fastest cooling of the felsic rocks. This is a rock that felt solidified incredibly fast, and it made a very, very glassy, dark color shape rock, right? That forms during those paraclastic explosions or lava flows, which are associated with felsic eruptions, all right? So uh, when an ever felsic eruption is a little more mafic, you're going to get this, this obsidian. Now, pumice rock will happen during paraclastic explosions when you also have fast cooling, but full of gas inside. So you're going to have this vesicular texture, which is characteristic of the pumice rock. So, quick review. Among felsic explosions, intrusive materials become granite, which is coarse. Extrusive materials become rhyolite if they cool down at uh, fast, but not as fast as they are as they cool down to form obsidian or pumice rock. If it form a lava flow, it's probably going to become obsidian, very glassy and black and dark. If it's from a uh, pyroclastic material full of gas inside, and this is lava that flew into the air and cooled down mid-air full of gas inside, you form pumice rock. The cool thing about pumice rock, by the way, it is so light because sometimes it has gas trapped inside after, right after the, the uh, explosion that sometimes it will actually float on water, this rock. All right? It's less dense than water sometimes. All right. Then you have the intermediate kinds of igneous rocks. And these are the andesite and the diorite. And they look little felsic and a little mafic and these are the andesite is the extrusive version and the diorite is the intrusive version which means that the andesite will resemble the rhyolite it will be aphanitic or fine grain all right and then the diorite will example resemble the granite and will be a little more coarse grained okay and then you hit the mafic rocks, or the rocks that form because of oceanic eruptions, the most common types of igneous rocks in the world because the oceans are covering most of the world, right? And they're going to be denser than the other kinds of rocks because they're going to be made of more magnesium than silicon and oxygen. And the most common types of basalt and gabbro. Basalt is the extrusive version, or the one that cools down fast in contact with water usually. It's going to be fine-grained and aph or aphanitic. And then the gabbro is going to be the intrusive version or, or the mafic rock that forms on the ground without actually seeping to the surface, which is going to be uh, coarse grained or phaneritic, all right, because it cools down slow. And that is a roundup of all the types of igneous rocks. And now you can understand why there are so many kinds of rocks. Putting it all together about what we talked about, there are so many kinds of rocks because they will form with different amounts of silicon ox uh, dioxide and and will be either more mafic or more felsic or intermediate they will also form at different temperatures at different pressures they will melt at different points because of the whole fractional crystallization thing we talked about before and that's how you get rocks of different kinds around the earth all right by the way Mantle rock, which is rock that's underneath the ground, which is solidified, is called peridotite. And that's a very, very famous, important one, all right, that you also need to know about. All right, so your fine grain igneous rocks are going to be rhyolite, which is a very felsic rock. A little less felsic, you make it dacite. And I didn't even talk about that one, but it's a little bit intermediate rock that it didn't, didn't mention either. Then a little more intermediate, you're going to get andesite, which is also fine-grained, and then completely fine-grained basalt at the mafic end of the spectrum. More, more mafic than that, you're not going to really going to get because nothing is that mafic on the crust. Only in the, the mantle, you're going to have real, real ultra-mafic rock, which was very, very completely fluid. Right, all crust rock crystallizes as a tiny little bit, it has a tiny little bit of silicon in it. Only the mental rocks will have pure magnesium and will be a little more fluid like. Now, on the coarse end of the spectrum, you're going to have granite, and with a little more in between, you're going to have tonalite. And just like that side, I didn't mention that one because it's the first intermediate state. The second intermediate state would be the diorite, and that one I did mention before, and then you're going to have the gabbro which is going to be the intrusive. So the ones at the bottom are intrusive, coarse grain rocks usually, and the ones at the top are extrusive or fine grain rock usually. 
all right and also notice that as you become more mafic you also tend to become darker so you can use the 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 color as an indication of the of how mafic the rock actually is all right and that's why obsidian which is not featured here is dark because it's, it comes from lava flows so it is felsic rock but since it's a lava full felsic rock which happens during those composite volcanoes sometimes and it's going to be dark right and pumice rock is going to be light because it's made of of, of more of paraclastic material that than than actual lava flows all right and also remember add a layer to this and remember that these rocks will be melting and cooling and, and forming at different rates and at different points and that's why you're going to have overlap as you go deeper into the earth or into higher higher temperatures uh, on the formation of the rocks and because of the different compositions and different melting points and, and, and everything like that and we talked about this in the idea of the bone reaction series you don't need to know this in detail but you do need to know that there's this continuous series of crystallization or the idea that crystals will not form at, together all right because Remember, if you have rock that has a lot of different kinds of material in it, the materials that have a higher solidification point or crystallization point will crystallize first. And that means they will be more common among the early crystals, making the lava more common in the other kinds of materials which are, have a, a, a lower crystallization point and have to cool down fat more in order to actually form. And this will lead to what we call fractional crystallization, which is going to basically cause the, the lava to form at different points. Notice, for example, how in this picture, the green minerals only form at the, at the lowest temperatures. And that's, the, for example, olivine, paroxysine, and, pla and the other kinds of materials. But other materials will form at higher temperatures and will crystallize first. The same to be true about the opposite. The first ones to melt would be the ones that were the first ones to crystallize when you were trying to form the rock. So, and in rock melting, you have partial melting or melting in different orders. In rock in crystallization, you also have fractional crystallization or rock forming in different, in different times. And that's what explains the reaction series that you see as you go deeper into the earth. Rocks will form at deeper, deeper in different, different uh, types of rock. All right? And that's it. And that's igneous rocks in general. And now we just have one more video. We talked about the impact of volcanoes and how we can actually predict volcanic eruptions. I'll see you guys then.